All right, to give us more perspective on what happens next in this case, forensic psychologist Gary Bricado and attorney Rachel Fazay. Gary, Rachel, thank you both so much for being here. Rachel, we're going to start with you. Is there anything that surprised you about this morning's hearing? This is not a surprising hearing. This is the defense asking for more time to prepare the case. And in this case, which is highly circumstantial at this point, I think that this is the right move. So they are waiving their time to have this heard quickly, but they are doing that so that they can prepare more thoroughly. All right. So, 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 Rachel, you say it's the right thing, you know, for the defense to do, in your opinion. If you are the defense here, what is the most important thing for them to do right now? Right now, what I think they are trying to do, because it is so unlikely that they will get the trial thrown out or the uh, charges thrown out during the preliminary hearing phase. Right now, they want to ask all the possible questions that they can so that they can eventually poke as many holes in this case that is possible. So what they will try to do during this preliminary hearing in June is ask questions and they will attempt to just continue to learn all of the state's evidence that points to Coburger. All right, Gary, let, let's kick it over to you. You study mass murders. You've really dug into this case. You've profiled the killer. What do you think about any possible connection to the victims? That's what so many people want to know. Mm. Uh, in terms of possible relationship with the victims, it's very confusing because we have to remember that in some perpetrators, there doesn't have to be a literal connection to the victim. It could be symbolic. In other words, if somebody represents a group that has made you feel ostracized or rejected, that would be adequate for projecting uh, all kinds of hostility or fantasy onto them. Usually in cases like that, the idea is, is that you hone in on someone that you've accidentally encountered at school or on the street or at work that you are drawn to, and the other individuals surrounding the person who is the object of fixation um, are unfortunately caught up uh, in by association. Um, but of course, it's premature to say that. Uh, but it's one of the first things uh, I'm eager to hear uh, when the facts come out about this case. But it wouldn't be necessary uh, for there to be a direct relationship at all for this type of homicide. You know, and you certainly know, as we said uh, uh, just a moment ago, you study mass murders. Uh, so you think that if this was 10 years ago, Koberger either wouldn't have been caught or at least not this quickly. Tell us why. I do. I believe that several decades ago when DNA technology, cell phone technology, internet technology and other techniques were not available, the lack of clear motive and the lack of clear relationship with the intimates surrounding the victims um, would have made this case very baffling. It's very similar to what turns up in things like serial murder cases. Uh, where there's no clear linkage to the victims um, so that it takes this kind of technology to outpace that type of offender. So, Rachel, uh, before we go, let's kick it back to you. You know, we've spent weeks talking motive. Gary just mentioned it. Now, at the end of the day, how crucial will that be to the case? A motive is not necessary. You don't have to have a motive to have a conviction. A motive provides the jury with some answer to the questions they have regarding why. And so the motive gives them kind of a clearer picture as to why something would have happened. And once they can answer the question as to why something would have happened, it makes them more likely to convict. So I think they will come out with a motive, even if it is this kind of loose connection or that he had some sort of fascination with mass murder or fascination with the crime or how the psychology behind it, given his criminology background. I think they will put on some sort of motive that allows the jury to connect the dots between the circumstantial evidence that is leading to this charge. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.